Hi, I'm Liv and welcome back to The Book Nook. I do that head tilt thing every time and I don't know why. Hi guys, so if I look a bit tired today that's because I am. I've woken up this morning on my day off and I'm recording this video because I've been a bit lax on doing my videos. I've not been like in a great mental space recently and I've just been kind of like blah. So I did try and film my books of the year so far at the weekend, but it just descended into utter madness. Honestly, I don't know what I was talking about, so I'm trying again. And hopefully this one won't last about 40 minutes. So when I was editing what I did film on Saturday, yeah, I talk about each book for like 10 minutes and I'm like, uh, no, what, no. So this one is gonna be much more concise and to the point. So I've got my books of the year so far, just sat down here. Also, I've discovered the wonders of hairspray. So yeah, not had my hair cut yet, but yesterday at work it was pissing me off so much I went over to Tesco's and got myself a little hairspray. Other supermarkets are available. And um... Anyway, I'm gonna go through my books of the year so far in the order that I read them. Apparently I decided that as that was coming out of my mouth I thought I was gonna do them in order that they were published, but uh, I guess not. Better go and read Stack My Stack. I've picked six books and all of them bar two I will have mentioned in previous videos so I will link the previous videos down below. The two that I haven't mentioned in videos are because I read them, one of them before I even started booktube and one because I haven't wrapped it up yet. So the first one that I have picked is George Saunders' Lincoln in the Bardo. I bloody love this book. I know it has split people. When it first came out uh, back in March it was getting rave reviews and then since then sort of people have been coming out and saying oh I don't quite get it, it's, you know, what was all the hype and I, I do understand why people don't love it but for me it, it ticks so many boxes. George Saunders, I love his writing so as soon as I heard last year that he was going to be writing a novel I was just like ah, freaking out. So the story of this follows Abraham Lincoln's eight-year-old son Willie who dies and when he is buried it the story joins the graveyard where he is sort of interred and we meet all of these ghostly characters who are sort of talking to Willie and helping him through realising he's dead. The Bardo, of course, in Tibetan culture is the sort of, uh, sort of like purgatory, the, the middle place. And Abraham Lincoln comes to visit his son every night. For me, this book, the prose is outstanding. It's written, I've not read many books that write in the style of this book. It's sort of, it's almost laid out a bit like a script, except the name is underneath who's been speaking. and when it's in the chunk of the person speaking it's not just speech all the action is in there as well and it's these sort of run-on sentences so there's a lot of pace in there there's a lot of confusion and it's just absolutely gorgeous i love it i know people are split on it i know people are saying that it's not quite all that but for me it is it plays with form it explores grief love power responsibility and it's just it's really funny in places at one point one of the ghosts grows several um members shall we say because they can sort of shapeshift and yeah it deals with love what ties you to a place family it's just ugh, i bloody loved this book i read it yeah back in march or april when it came out i forget now and i absolutely love it i thoroughly recommend this one i've been recommending it to a load of colleagues and a few people who were sort of on the fence have tried it and loved it a few people aren't going to people have described it as wanky and you know what yeah i like a book to be a bit wanky every now and again it plays with form it's innovative it's moving it's bold i love it so Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders go and read it hello the next book that I've picked for my books of the year so far is Luke Kennard's Kane now technically this was released in hardback last year but as it was released in paperback in June and I only read it this year it's on this list you will of course remember me absolutely raving about this book in a couple of videos when I started reading it for cozy reading night and then finished it and then wrapped it up and just wax lyrical about it and it absolutely is amazing. It's sort of a concept album of a poetry collection would be the best way to describe it. You've got a series of poems at the beginning and the end and in the middle is a sort of TV series of poems based on an anagram of Genesis 4, 9 to 12. So it counts the letters in that verse, reuses them in these episodes and then there's a sort of episode commentary around it and it's just absolutely fantastic. Again, plays with form, it's a concept album, it's funny, it's moving, it says something about humanity and faith which I didn't think I'd really be bothered about but it's a really really fantastic collection as I say more of a concept album than a collection I would say um I would say I would say I would say but I've said I would say so I've said I would say I would say so yeah I absolutely urge you to go and pick up Kane by Luke Kennard spend an afternoon with it and you'll absolutely fall in love next one is Yuri Herrera's Kingdom Cons I am in love with Yuri Herrera's writing I first read Transmigration of Bodies 
and I fell in love with it and I was putting off reading Signs Preceding the End of the World because I didn't want to have read all of Yuri Herrera's work. Then I heard that a third book was coming out, Kingdom Cons, and and other stories sent me a copy and I love them and I am forever in their debt. And... Is that weird? Is that inappropriate? Are we there yet in our relationship and other stories? I don't know. I don't know. I just took us there. So I read this one uh, a couple of months ago and I absolutely love it. It's a gangland fairy tale is the best way to describe it. It's edgy, the prose, again, I mean, Lisa Dillman's translations of Yuri Herrera, obviously I have no idea. Uh, Herrera is a Mexican author, writes in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish to save my life. So I don't know how it compares to the source text, but Lisa Dillman's translations, oh, it's just a marriage made in heaven. These, these themes and the ideas that Yuri Herrera plays with and the way that Lisa Dillman makes it readable for people who don't speak Spanish is amazing. Crops, translator, oh. It is just fantastic. It's a slim little one, all of Yuri Herrera's books are about this length and you can just sit with it for an afternoon and just get lost in this world that is just magical, it's absolutely magical. The gangland elements are sort of something, again, I didn't think I'd ever really want to read a book that's anything to do with sort of gangs and not mafias, but you know, drug cartels, drug cartels, that's what I was talking about. I didn't think I'd ever really want to read a book about that, but the way Herrera frames it as this sort of other world like a fairy tale, as I say, the, the court of the king is this massive mansion and everybody's got their roles and it's just, ah! I finally read Signs Preceding the End of the World the other day and I would say all of Yuri Herrera's books get better. So I read them two, three, one, and they definitely, you can you can see that chart of, of progression, of ideas, of style, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So go and check out Yuri Herrera in general, but go and check out Kingdom Cons. Spend an afternoon with it and absolutely love it. Tea break! The next book on my books of the year so far, this is one that I was sort of like, oh, can I put it on this bit because it technically isn't out towards the end of July, but sod it. And that is Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Here's the postcard that tells you what the cover's gonna look like. So I'm gonna hold it up like this. Tin Man by Sarah Winman. It absolutely broke me in the best way possible. I'd seen so much about this on sort of Twitter and blogs and things like that, that I asked Tinder Press if they wouldn't mind sending me a copy and they obliged and I am so glad they did. Have a bit of ice cream and have some tissues ready because this book will make you howl. It's so moving, it's so beautiful. It's about Michael and Ellis, two friends, and Annie comes into their lives, and I'm not telling you anything more than that because you need to read this book with no idea of what's coming because Sarah Winman's prose is just gorgeous. Now, I've never read When God Was a Rabbit or A Year of Marvelous Ways, her previous two novels, but if the prose is anything like this, then I'm definitely gonna be seeking them out soon. It's just got this absolute powerful lyricism and a real humanity. It just, oh, it just touches something. I'm getting a bit like emotional just thinking about it because I finished it and I sat on the sofa and I just put the book down and just cried. It's, it will break you, it will build you up, it will teach you something about love, about friendship, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So as soon as this one comes out on the 27th of July in the UK, go and get yourself a copy. Be warned, but go and get yourself a copy. You will not regret reading this one. It is absolutely beautiful. Then the next one on my list is a kind of bit of a surprise for me, to be honest. I didn't think this kind of book, and I don't want to sound sort of, oh, no, that sounds really kind of... Basically, it's a surprise to me that this book is on my list. Now, I didn't read it that long ago, but since I finished it, it has been playing on my mind and sitting with me, and I think it's a very, very important book. And that is He Said, She Said by Erin Kelly, and I'm really pleased that I actually managed to say that without going, he said, she said. I will, again, I will link you to my wrap-up video where I talk about this, but there is something about this book, there we go, you can actually see the cover if I hold it like this. There is something about this book, as a thriller, it's fantastic. It's got the twists and the turns that you want that, oh my God, come out of nowhere and slap you in the face and it's absolutely fantastic. But then it's got an important message behind it and something that I think is not spoken about enough, something is not written about enough, and Erin Kelly deals with it in a really, really helpful way. Helpful, healthy, I don't know, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Again, being really coherent, but uh, it is early and I've only had a cup of tea for breakfast. It deals with the justice system, how we treat rape victims, rape accusers, rape accused, and it's just, for me, a really important book. And I know I said it in my wrap up and I know I've just said it now, but it is a bloody good thriller as well. You get about two thirds of the way through and you think you know where things are going and then bam, you do not have a clue. So it's really fantastic in terms of a thriller. But as I say, it says something really important. It does something really interesting and really clever and really important. And as a way of talking about topics that don't get talked about enough, this is a fantastic way of doing it. So props to Erin Kelly. I loved this book. And as I say, I've been thinking about it more and more since I finished it. And I think you should go and read it. Then the last book on my books of the year so far is technically a bit of an honorable mention. 
probably is on this list because I've not long finished it and everyone is talking about it and I'm caught up in the emotion of it and that is Pages For You by Sylvia Brownrigg. Now of course this was originally published in 2001 I want to say? Yes, 2001 and it has been reprinted, republished, rejacketed to coincide with the release of Pages For Her which is a follow-up. And I read this one in about two days, in two sittings and oh, I read Carol this year and I know it's very easy to you know, compare any books that explore any kind of lesbian relationship to Carol. But it does have that similar kind of feel to Carol because you've got an older woman and a younger woman and there's sort of this first relationship for the younger girl and it's just, ah, uh... Oh, you are all wet. Cat is all wet and is around my feet. It's a book that explores the power and the importance of first relationships, first love, lust at first sight, love at first sight. Um, it's about a young girl called Flannery who's just started at college. I say young girl, she's like 17. Um, she started at college and she goes to order a jelly omelette in a diner, which bleh, never want one of them. And she locks eyes with this woman who is having a cup of coffee and she is absolutely transfixed with her. And when she has her first lecture, she realizes this woman is one of her sort of lecturers. So from there begins a relationship. Now it's not a spoiler, it says it on the back and I'm sure if you've been hearing about this book, you know the relationship is doomed. But it is not so much about how the relationship ends, it's about the journey and how the relationship blossoms between the two of them as I say, the importance of this is a first relationship, first proper relationship for Flannery, first relationship with a woman. And again, the prose is just magical. It is written, as it's called Pages for You, each chapter is only like one or two pages and you just, so you just, you, you just leaf through it, you just go through it, you race through it. I did it in two sittings and it's one that makes you cry, it's one that makes you feel, it brings back, oh, it evokes sort of first love so kind of painfully and vividly. But yeah, it's an absolutely gorgeous book thoroughly recommend it and it's definitely one of my books of the year so far. So those are my books of the year so far for 2017. I could not tell you how much I struggled with picking them. I really did struggle. I don't know why it's only, I'm not beholden to anybody. It's only me that makes these decisions, but I found it really hard to pick them. There were so many more that I could have put on this list. I could have done three times as many as this for my books of the year so far, but I was like, no, come on, pick the ones that have had the biggest impact on you so far and the ones that you really want to shout about. So that's them books there. Even when I upload this video, I'll probably be rethinking my decisions and going, oh, I should have put that one in, oh no, I should have put that one in, oh no, oh no. But you know what? That is the wonderful thing about reading. There is something for everyone. I know that Lincoln and the Bardo has split opinion, but for me, it is one of my books of the year. So it's very, very high up there. That's the other thing. I haven't ranked them because I don't trust myself to rank them and not have regrets and get myself in a tizzy afterwards and going, no, it was wrong. I know, I'm a ridiculous human haven't ranked them and I don't think I'm going to and when I do my books of the year um, I don't think I will rank them but I will probably try and pick my book of the year so that'll be fun. Mm. So those are my books of the year so far what about you? What are your books of the year so far? Have any of the books that I've picked made it onto your list or are any of the books that are on my list absolutely put on your list? Let's have a little chat in the conversation below. In the... You know what I mean. Again, sorry that I haven't uploaded a video in a week, if anyone's bothered. I have just been having a really weird week, and yes, sorry for the humongous bags under my eyes today that somehow managed to reach halfway down my face. I am a little sleepy. I seem to be constantly sleepy at the moment. Hmm. Yeah, my next video is going to be my July haul part one, and just as a sneaky peek, yeah, I have a problem. I say that like that's news to you. You already know I have a problem. Hmm. I'm currently getting text messages on my phone to tell me that some more books that I've ordered have just arrived at work. And then I am probably still gonna do the mid-year reading tag, so that one will be coming probably next week when I've got some time off. So yeah, have a little chat with me in the comments below about your books of the year so far. As I say, if any of mine are on your list or if any of mine are on your anti list, I'm interested to know of what you've read so far is your books of the, are your books of the, it's still early. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.